This is the Entrepreneur Unleashed Show, episode 79 with Michelle Mercurio. Hi, I'm Patty Keating, and I believe entrepreneurs are the future of the world. Over the past two decades, I've built four businesses in alignment with my values, giving me the freedom to live where I want and do what I love. I'm here to tell you that creating your successful business does not require struggle or sacrifice. So how do you create the lifestyle business you love doing only what you love? Welcome to the Entrepreneur Unleashed podcast. Today, I get to bring you Michelle Mercurio. She has a mission to help people not miss their lives. Whether she's, transfer, um, whether she's helping transformational entrepreneurs write their brand story or having a porch picnic with family and friends, she believes we could all be asking a little more of ourselves with a little less of who the world expects us to be. And that's a topic you guys know I love. So here we go with Michelle. Welcome. Thank you so much, Patty. I'm thrilled to be here. So glad you're here. Would you like to briefly elaborate on the introduction? I just gave you a quick uh, intro. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I call myself a brand catalyst, which is just a title I made up. Um, I also made up the word authenticist because I believe that we have to really go within ourselves to figure out who we are and stop doing all the things that the world expects us to do. Uh, you know, and like you said, I work with transformative entrepreneurs, so coaches, authors, speakers, you know, business providers to basically take the transaction out of what it is that they do and talk about that transformation because I think it's really about all of us being who we truly are and not a persona, you know? Uh, so we have to cut through a lot of the BS in our marketing speak and actually be here for who we are. And as you can imagine, that means there's a lot of mindset work. <laughs> there's a lot of messaging work. And then there's a lot of less or a lot less of the, the crappy marketing that we all sometimes fall <laughs> victim to. Like, oh, here, have a, have a $20 solution, which we really know that should come from us. Yeah, awesome. So what inspired you to start your business? You know, I loved working with people to begin with. I have always been a writer. I've always been somebody who uh, loved to tell stories. And, you know, it's a hot topic to tell brand stories right now or brand storytelling. But story are, stories are really how we create our lives, how we connect with others, how we transform the world, how we share our experience. And even in all of my careers, because I haven't always worked for myself, I found myself that stories were the central piece. And I, you know, I, I did a lot of corporate work. I did corporate communications work. I worked um, in personal brand and helping people with their career strategies and doing that kind of work. But starting my business was more about like being who I am. Yeah. And that meant I could also help people be who they are. Yes. Yay. We love you over here. Yes. Same. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of major obstacles showed up when you started your business and began your own marketing and all of the things? Oh my gosh. So you probably have experienced this too. So many of my clients come to me and they say, I just need to talk about what it is I do, but that's not the real block, right? The real, and this is my block too. This was my block. It was mindset. It was the stories, not the story that I wanted to tell people about my business. Yeah. It was undoing the stories that I was telling myself. Oh, so good. Right. And so my life kind of blew up. Like I had, I called it an awakening. I didn't call it an early midlife crisis. It was my awakening. <laughs> and I had to figure out what stories I was telling myself that were not serving me and then figure out how to get to the guilt, the shame, the fear, basically all the things that keep us stuck yeah. and break up with those things. Yeah. Awesome. So, I mean, that can be a challenge because first of all, we have to, have the awareness, right? Right. 
And then you have to do the work. Yeah, then we want to we're like, okay, now what do I do with this? So right. how did you move through that? So a variety of things, you know, part of it was I, and my life looked a little crazy for a while. Uh, you know, I, I left my husband. Uh, we are together. We have a very different marriage now than we used to, which is fantastic. Um, but like, I was like, I'm breaking up with suburbia. I'm breaking up with the spouse. I'm breaking up with this. And I'm like, actually, I don't need to break up with anything. <laughs> I need to just return. Yeah. So what did I do? I invested in myself. I hired a coach. Yeah. Okay. I also invested in, you know, just the mindset work and like how to move through this. Yeah. You know, I, I know that I've got a bunch of different resources that I always tell my clients about, mm -hmm. uh, different books and podcasts and things, but I learned how to really meditate and not just like, I'm going to sit here for five minutes like this. <laughs> uh, it, it was truly like, all right, what is it that I actually am saying to myself? Yeah. How do I rescript that? And like I said, I've always been a storyteller. And part of the biggest stories I was telling myself were, were that I couldn't do things. So actually, physically, I wrote out the stories that I was telling myself and rewrote them with Beautiful. new endings. That's one thing that I did do. There's a lot of different things, right? But mm -hmm. it's not just one thing. It's not just about meditating. It's not just about visualization. It's not about just having a friend or a therapist. It's not about like investing, you know, millions of dollars, but investing time in yourself, mm -hmm. sitting, learning how to calm your mind. That that's how I did it. Nice. So what did you learn as a result of that? I think the biggest thing I learned is pretty much what I do now, right? I learned that a lot of the things that we tell ourselves as entrepreneurs and especially success driven women and men, right? All of us who are here to do our businesses or do our jobs or live our lives and, and try to help others mm -hmm. is that we have to also, we, we are people as well. It's not just about the people we help. We are people. And if we're not going to be with ourselves, we can't help others too. So good. You know, that's a big one, I think, for people I know. My, I see that in my own clients a lot. They are outwardly focused. Uh -huh. And when I can get them inside looking at their patterns and their beliefs and their, yeah. how they're feeling and what's their state and all of that stuff, all of a sudden everything just kind of gets easier. Right. We just get to be who we are. <laughs> Which is such a beautiful thing. And I do believe, and I think you believe this too, just from hearing a little bit about you and knowing, you know, what it is that you put out there. The more we are ourselves, we can be ourselves in our communities. And then the small transformations happen. And then those get bigger and those get bigger and those get bigger. Yeah. It's not about going out to change the world. You are the world. You know, we are the answer that we seek. Yeah. So if we are the people that are also investing in ourselves, then we can turn that into a bigger movement. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So what are you passionate about right now? Uh, right now. So actually the funny thing is, it's actually related to this. I have always in my branding work, worked with people on storytelling and, and things like this. So mm -hmm. I've done the, you know, help them remove limiting beliefs, help them rescript their personal stories and done all of that. I recently pulled all of my mindset work out of my branding program and created a mindset program. Oh, nice. So yeah. And uh, yeah, so I sold it and now I need to build it. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's there, As right? It, it, yeah, exactly. But mm -hmm. it's there already. And it's something that came, you know, it has evolved over years and years. Mm -hmm. And so while the mindset program is new, uh, it, it's, a piece of all of the things that I've been doing in branding work because I had somebody come to me recently and she's like, I don't need the branding work. I need, I need you. I need you to do what you do and what people tell me that you do. <laughs> I need you to validate where I'm coming from and then help me like vortex myself out of this yeah. into the future that I want. And I said, okay, so I'll pull it out and that's what I'm building. So that's what I'm excited about. Well, exciting. And you'll get to promote that and talk about it and share your own stories about mindset. Absolutely. All right. What's your vision for the next five years? So I accidentally created a branding agency. I, <laughs> I co-created an agency with a design partner who I've been working with for years and years. And we 
went in on this space together for this for 2020 and this is going to be our year <laughs> just like everybody right yeah. uh so we went on this in, in on this space so that we could share a physical space together yeah and then um COVID hit and we started to like really look at all of the programs and everything we did and starting really co-creating even more so everything from words design mindset messaging marketing all of it and we realized just even a few months ago oh oops we created a branding agency together how did we do that i'm not quite sure but we did and so the next five years i would say that the brand scene is going to be a nice. big part of my vision yeah and also you know i want to just keep connecting with amazing people yeah yeah it's interesting you know i have had so many people say that over the last month of interviews like people are really feeling like, let's connect and change some things. Let's do things together. Let's lock arms and make a right. difference and honor everybody's um, skill set, mindset, move Absolutely. together as a theme. It's amazing. Absolutely. And I think we so think from an entrepreneurial standpoint that we have to go it alone. Huh. And that's not the case. You can have business besties. And this is something that we all do. And then sometimes it's more formal. You know, I've got three or four different side projects that are formal projects yeah. and they're with different people. And it doesn't just have to be me and my vision and toil and hustle and all of that. We create bigger than the sum of our total if we go in it together. Absolutely. And you know, I think entrepreneurs, we're just kind of designed that way. Like I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go for it. And then, we realize somewhere along the way, oh, wait, I don't have to do this alone. Or hopefully we do, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so what's the best advice you've ever received? The best, to get help, seriously. It <laughs> feels like these questions together are just kind of flowing together. Um, the best advice I ever received was to get help. Don't think you have to do it all alone. Yeah. And get in, take inspired action with that help, right? It doesn't have to be that you have to always get help. You're not looking for help to validate you. Yeah. Even though, I mean, sometimes you do, right? That's, that's yeah. part of it. But you're not doing it for that reason. You're doing it so that you can then amplify the things that are within you even more beautifully yeah. with the right help. Yeah. And we're so afraid, and I say we, you know, and I, I'm sure you see this in your clients as well, to say that we don't know something because, oh my gosh, you have to answer. You have to have an answer. <laughs> but you don't have to have the answer. You have to have the question. You just have yeah. to have the right question. So good. You know, and it's just kind of return, returning to your purpose and then understanding the questions yeah. and then getting help so that you know what questions to go forward with. That is a huge piece. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Okay. What about personal growth? What would you say um, the biggest personal growth you've experienced on this journey has been? Uh, really learning to trust deeply mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. and the people who are like my soul people. Yeah. You know, sometimes we show up and I say we, but I'll say I. Sometimes I was showing up with like wounds, right? Like the things that like uh, you've got a trauma and you can't like get over it. You don't want to trust people. Yeah. And when you show up open and when I show up open, all of a sudden, a lot of those things that I didn't trust, like what, what is the worst thing that can happen here? You know, this is that kind of, I'm going to go it alone. I'm going to do it alone as well. But that trust is, is key. Yeah. You know, when you trust yourself, mm -hmm. trusting others becomes even easier because you know that you are always the plan. Yeah. You don't have to have somebody else give that to you. They cannot betray you if you do not betray you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a huge piece that I feel like I've learned. Yeah, that's awesome. So what about gadgets and tools that make your life easier? What do you use? Oh my goodness. Well, I'm super excited that we're about to get a drone for our office space because I think we're going to be able to do some really cool things with that. Yeah, um, but, that would be uh, so much fun. Yeah, exactly. I think that the tools and gadgets that I use, honestly, I love great apps. 
So different things, whether it's a time tracker app or whether it is something that, um, you know, keeps me going with my goals. Uh, those are, those are really like where I had, uh, obviously lately zoom has been really important. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and you know, I mean, I like you, I work with people all over the globe. Yeah. And so I think, you know, just making sure that we're, we're staying connected uh, and, and using the, the social tools that are available to us. I feel like even though the social tools change, if you know what it is that you really need to keep you on track, yeah. then you're going to find the right tool for it. Yeah, and that's a good thing to know. You know, sometimes I know for me personally, I've gone through a lot of planners or different tools thinking this is the one until I finally figured out what works for me, not what was I marketed that seemed sounded like a good idea. Right, exactly. I mean, I am a sucker for a pretty journal and I will tell you that journals, I tried to do all the apps and tried to track things and, and do yeah. all of those things. And, and some of them are, are really good. Yeah. You know, I, I love to use different types of schedulers and things like that. But when I really need to think, it's the notebook that I'm currently sitting yeah. here, like heading next to me on my yeah. desk. <laughs> yeah, old school. It always works yep. for me too. Yeah. What about like books, podcasts, blogs? What are you reading? What are you listening to? So I would actually tell you about two of the things that I go back to over and over again. And I recommend it to all of my potential and actually all my new clients when they come in. I listen um, to David Hawkins' Letting Go. Mm. Um, it's a fantastic book. There are some dated reference into it, but I love to listen to it because it's almost like a meditation. Mm -hmm. And uh, even going back to, you know, John kabat Wherever You Go, There You Are, mm -hmm. a lot of the things when I, uh, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle, you know, I go back to a lot of different mindset, like understanding how we work as people yeah. uh, before I go to, like, how do I go do this? Yes. Not that there are amazing things out there, mm -hmm. but this is the first thing for me to come and check in with myself first. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. let me go to those types of resources, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, for media, we, we have quite a bit, as you know, uh, that we can go and listen to, but I want different voices. So like Vox or the Atlantic or, you know, looking at the writers, some, there's some great things even just on Medium where you're, you're following topics and you get to discover new writers. That's one of the things that I absolutely love okay. because in the past we had tried and true like blogs to go to. Mm -hmm. And I believe in that. Right. Yeah. But I get to see your things. I get to see other people's when I'm really like engaged in mm -hmm. those kinds of topics that I'm interested in. Yeah. I love that. And, and new, um, just new ideas and thoughts and new people. Yeah. Right. All right, looking back, if you were to do this all over again, what would you tell your younger self? Oh, uh, be here now. Mm. Wherever you are, be here now. Yeah. yeah. And I wrote something recently, and it kind of surprised me. I had a realization. I was actually interviewing somebody from my podcast. And I had a realization. I feel like when I spoke with her, she's older. She's in her 80s. And she said, I've always been, you know, this girl, I don't feel older. And I realized that I've always felt whatever age I am right then, but I still am. Like I could see my future me. I could see my past me if I'm just here now, you know, I get to be here now. And I think that that's, we get so caught up sometimes in the, all the things that we've done yeah. and all of the places that we think we're going. Right. <laughs> and then life happens. And if you're here now, you're still not going to miss it. I don't know about you, but I've had some amazing days, even with all of the things happening in our world, yeah. just kind of turning it upside down. Because a moment to me, when you take that pause, a moment is beautiful. Yeah. And you get to appreciate it right where you are. And I think that that's what I would tell my younger me. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing yourself with all of us. I, I really appreciate your time and, and your message. Thank you so much, Patty. I really appreciate it. Hello and welcome. I'm recording this episode from my home office during self-quarantine as we were all asked to stay home due to the coronavirus. 
If you like what you hear and you'd like to hear more, please join me in my Facebook group. It's called the Unleashed Entrepreneurs. You can search that on Facebook. Come on over. It's a community of thriving entrepreneurs making a difference in the world, doing what they love and changing lives. Hope to see you there. Enjoy the show. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have you ever wondered what you could do to make your own business and grow it online? Head on over to pattykeating.com and take the entrepreneur code. You'll discover your unique value, your personality style, and how you can combine those two into a thriving business that helps people and lets you make money doing what you love. I'll see you there. Bye for now.